Hi there folks. In this video we're going to have a look at a Yamaha Marshall 38 Special Revolver. Now this is a 4 inch barrel in this particular example. Single and double action revolver. Broadly based on the Smith & Wesson Model 10 uh, military police style revolver. Probably the most copied revolver in the world, the Smith & Wesson Model 10. In fact, this is such a close uh, facsimile that these Packmeyer grips are actually Smith & Wesson K-frame grips. They fit perfectly well. We've got a serrated trigger. You can sort of see the logo there hiding partially underneath the grips. I've heard most people around here call this a llama, but I believe the correct pronunciation is Yama. These are a little different than a Model 10 because they've got an adjustable rear sight. Got this sort of a vent rib barrel going on here. The ejector is not fully shrouded. It's sticking out in the open like an old uh, Model 10 would be. And we've got this serrated front sight. So we'll turn it over and have a look at the other side. Very much the same uh, layout as a Smith & Wesson. You can see the 38 Special cartridge on there. We've got some Spanish proof marks. These were a fairly inexpensive revolver. They're of reasonably decent quality. Certainly there's uh, a lot worse copies of Smith & Wesson revolvers out there. You can see that the uh, revolver has a large hammer, very target style hammer on it. You've got an adjustable rear sight, adjustable for windage and elevation, and it's also white outlined. And the top surface is matted to reduce glare. The front sight is uh, grooved and matted to reduce glare as well. So a pretty serviceable set of sights on these things. So Yamaha has been out of business for quite some time now, but you will find these on the, uh, the second-hand market. And if they're in good condition and they lock up reasonably tight, and the price is right, they're, uh, they're worth owning. They operate in a very conventional manner. Push the cylinder latch in to open up the, the cylinder. Six shots. As you can see, they are not uh, counterboard cylinders. The 38 Special rims sit on top of the cartridge, which is actually superior in some respects because dirt is a lot easier to clean off a flat face cylinder than it is a counterboard cylinder. And we've got a full stroke ejector, which will throw the cartridge cases pretty well clear. And it's spring loaded. Once again, pretty much a, uh, a direct copy of the Smith & Wesson in that regard. Of course, this is single and double action. You can uh, cock the hammer or pull the trigger to fire double action. One thing that does uh, vary from the Smith & Wesson that it copies is if you look at the nose of the hammer you'll notice that there's no firing pin as you would find on a Smith. You can see that that's plain. The firing pin in these is, you can see it right down there, it is mounted in the frame which is uh, something that, that uh, I think Smith & Wesson move to later on. These do have a, uh, a hammer block type mechanism. You can see the, uh, the distance that the hammer goes to when the trigger is not depressed. That's how far ahead the hammer goes. With the trigger depressed, the hammer goes further into the frame. You can see the firing pin stick out there. So these are considered to be fairly safe to carry loaded if they were dropped on the hammer. The hammer was blocked from, from uh, moving ahead by the mechanism. Anyway, just a very uh, ordinary little revolver, reasonably well put together. This one's got a, uh, a little bit of, of uh, end shake and, and uh, wobble. I think it's been fired a fair bit. They probably do not survive as much heavy use as a Smith & Wesson would. I don't think the quality of steel is I don't know if it's the steel or the heat treatment. They might be a little touch softer than the Smith & Wesson. I would refrain from shooting a whole lot of plus B through these. 
in my opinion, these are best enjoyed with standard uh, pressure 38 special loads. Anyway, let's uh, let's stoke this thing up and uh, and give it a try. If you have one of these things, you might be wondering about uh, speed loaders. Well, Smith and Wesson Model 10 specific speed loaders like this HKS Model 10 are actually the right configuration for the, uh, the spacing of the chambers. However, the, uh, the latch is quite large on these and the latch will interfere with using a speed loader. So they don't really uh, go all the way into the gun like they should. It is usable though. You can just uh, put a Model 10 speed loader in that far, turn the button, and uh, it works reasonably well. Not as well as it would if the cylinder latch was beveled some. So ejection's pretty standard. Push the cylinder latch, open the cylinder up, and dump the empties out. There is some interference oftentimes between the uh, empties and the cylinder latch. You can see it's wore off a little bit at the bottom. This is a part that probably should be beveled off a bit to keep that from happening. Since the speed loaders don't uh, work ideally with this revolver, I usually just load it with single rounds. And uh, of course, nothing beats 38 special round nose for uh, speed of loading, at least with uh, at least compared to semi wad cutters and full wad cutters. The round noses just fall right into place. Even when your hands are cold, it still makes it pretty easy to load.